probably looking at the same uh, uh, email that, that basically the same layout, but he don't understand that you need to click the second email, not the first one. He's saying it hasn't come through yet because he's probably still at the same email. I don't know. Yes, sir. I'll go ahead and um, send it to him again while you, um, yes, sir, while you open up. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Hi, salam alaikum. This is your brother, Donnell Muhammad, a student in the ministry class under the divine professorship of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Welcome once again to the program of my walk with Jesus as a Muslim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. We are eternally grateful to Allah and his consistency that as he sent prophets to other nations and other people, he did not forget about us. He did not look over us, but he came himself in the person of a well-made man by the name of Master Far Muhammad, fulfilling the scriptures that as lightning shineth out of the east even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. We believe that this one fulfilling that scripture of the Son of Man, the return of Jesus, the return of Christ, the return of the Messiah is none other than Master Fard Muhammad. We believe that he came in July of 1930 to declare our independence on their Independence Day of July 4th, our independence from them. We thank this one for coming, searching among us, finding one worthy among us in the first instance, in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, his Christ, now Mahdi, and we thank the two of them for not leaving us comfortless, but giving us a leader, a teacher, a guide, their Messiah, our Jesus, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet all of you in our nation's greeting of peace of Isalam Alaikum. Our program for this evening is addressing the issue 
of what we broached this morning during our Sunday service. And that is reparations and reparative justice. Will America ever give justice to the black man and woman of America and in America? Of America because of stands for the possession of those who are in her clutches. And we were, our foreparents were enslaved, destroyed, and robbed of the knowledge of self, God, and others. And we are now here in America, declared free. And there are some of us who have accepted the guidance, accepted the revelation of God to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And so we are in America, but no longer the possession of America because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad has freed us indeed by freeing up our minds. And therefore, when you free up the mind and the spirit of the black man and reconnect him once again to God, as they could not enslave the free minds of our forefathers before their enslavement, they cannot free, uh, enslave us ever again because we've been exposed now to the teachings of God through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I greet you again. Assalamu alaikum. Let's go into this and then we can open up for some questions. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad had a 10 point program of what do the Muslims want and what do the Muslims believe? And he answered those questions and those questions remain. The 10 wants or the, yeah, the 10 wants or the, yeah, the 12 wants and the 10 beliefs or the 12 beliefs and the 10 wants of what the Muslims want and what the Muslims believed. And he stated very simply to the Negro leadership and even white America way back in the 30s what true justice looked like. And it's not that the Caucasians of America and the Europeans around the world are ignorant of what reparations should look like, what justice should look like to their ex-slaves. But our problem is we don't think that what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has offered us is the way out because we have been thoroughly brainwashed against our own best interests. So all we wanted from our slave masters was an opportunity to integrate. And we will never understand what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is offering to us except that God manufactures the necessary circumstances at this time that not only chastises our former slave masters and their children, but we too have the taste of this chastisement and our rejection of our gift from God through and in the revelation of Allah <coughs> to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and now under his leadership and through his leadership, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Here is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put before the world. He said to us, and before I state 
the obvious program of why we must separate from our open enemies in the government of white America and her European brethren, we must state why that has to be because we have received absolutely no peace, no justice in us. But we saw in our people in Alabama when they used to would just take pictures of white people beating us, police officers beating and killing us. This time, not only did they take pictures they also lit their bodies. One brother jumped up another a ferry into the water, 16 years old, to go over to help his fallen comrade and brother. That was a milestone in Black America, but the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan now has saturated the atmosphere where that revelation now is coming down into the minds of all of our people. He said in these words, we want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. But I thought we were free. I thought we were justified and equal. But are we really free? Yes, we may not have the physical chains on our hands and our legs, but most certainly the spiritual, intellectual chains of white supremacy are still firmly wrapped around our minds. He said in number two, we want justice, equal justice, under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed, class, or color. We want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. But listen to what he said here for those who want to accuse us of being hate teachers, and this is why we want to separate. Nothing could be further from the truth. He said, we want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless to creed, class, a color. Well, simply because we call the white man the devil does not mean we don't want justice for him. He's declaring here in no uncertain terms for all the public to see. We're not calling the white man the devil because we just want to hate somebody. He's called the devil because if you look at the definition of devil, it means a, it's like a compound word, D and evil, doers of evil. And if you juxtapose that definition over white people's history and over their current actions, they have not been the works of an angel, but they have been the works of the devil. No one can deny their documented history. And in spite of that, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying he still plans to give justice to all. We want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. And if we can't get the above three, and the number three is trial, 
and we have tried to work with white people going on 467 years. And I ask you a simple question. The three points that I just raised, we want freedom. Have we gotten it? I'll answer it for you. No. We want justice. Have we gotten it? No. We want we want equality of opportunity. Have we gotten it? No. Well, if we can't get that, then the fourth point is where you establish preparation, foundation, which is the meaning of number four. We want to establish a foundation where we can teach and reach our own people. So he says, since we have not gotten the above three, we want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate territory for the next 20 or 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality after giving them 400 years of our sweat and our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. I'm going to stop there and see if there are any questions and or comments. And then we want to talk about that this concept of separation is not new. Abraham Lincoln and others of his ilk wanted to separate us from them, but not because of any loving motive toward us, but because they wanted to colonize us because they believed that we were suffering under them by being here, that wasn't his biggest concern. His biggest concern was that they were suffering by us being here and he was not for integration. He was not for releasing black people after they destroyed us into the populations of white America, particularly his Southern brothers that were threatening to destroy the country because of the Civil War and the freeing, quote unquote, of the slaves. But we'll get into that in a moment. At this time, I want to open the floor up for anyone that would like to weigh in. Why do we deserve reparations? Why do we deserve repertory justice? What does it look like? There are talks now in, I believe, Florida, and they're talking about Rosewood. They're talking about paying people a million dollars, five million dollars to individuals. That has never been a solution to reparations. Did you know that most of the people particularly black people that have won the lottery, 80 to 90% of them that have had the Megla millions are dead or dead broke 
Because when you put <laughs> money in the hands of an ignorant man, he turns it right back over to the slave, same slave master that gave it to him. Reparations goes into a national treasury for the benefit of a nation of people to carry on over multiple generations like the state of Israel, like they did with Japan. Don't buy into this BS of you getting your million dollars individually. That's right. Yes, sir, Brother Stephen. Are there any questions, comments? Anybody want to weigh in, including yourself, on this topic of reparations and reparatory justice? No, I think um, I, at first I want to open up in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, and greet everyone out there in the greeting words of peace of Islam alaikum. And uh, as we know, this is a subject that is long time coming. And you, the, the, the thing about reparations is, you know, when we break that word down, we have the word repair. And so when we look at the history of the black man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, says that the worst crime that any any other human can inflict on another human is to rob them of a knowledge of themselves. Yes. And then on top of being robbed of a knock uh, of a knowledge of self, a knowledge of self being robbed of our name, our language, our religion, and our culture. And when we say name, language, religion, and culture, on the surface it sounds simple, but there's a science to your name. There's a science to your language, yes, there's a science to your culture. And I'll just say real quick, for instance, the science to a name. The science to a name is that the name gives you the nature and the function of a thing. So when he robbed of us of our name and then gave us the name Negro, he was then describing the function of the black man in, relation, in yes, relationship sir. to the white man. When we talk about um, our language, our language is how we communicate. But when we look, look at the English language, he has sub he has coded the, the English language to where everything that is black is negative and everything that is white is positive. Right. So black be black ball, you blackmail you and so forth and so on. So I just wanted to say that. And, and then when we juxtapose that and look at our condition as a people, then it's no wonder we act the way that we do because we don't, we're not even in our right mind. That is correct, yes, but thank you. That was a very beautiful synopsis of our problem as we talk about this most important subject that has come back to the forefront now, full force, because we see, as we saw in Alabama, no matter what we try to do to get along with them. Right. We are being forced now to see that no prophet, no messenger ever asked the people in the name of God to integrate with their oppressors. That's we right. are the only people that have been made to believe through deceit, as Brother Stephen just pointed out, that some kind of way we got to find a way and we've played into the trick, the ultimate trick, which was the hypocritical trick of integration, where all of a sudden our 400 year old enemy is now all of a sudden our friend. And can I say something too to that whole uh, event that happened? You know, we watched that event, and you know, it's like you saw all these hilarious memes. I mean, they are hilarious with you know uh, the. Uh, the, a statue that was uh, erected for Martin Luther King. He's grabbing a chair, a lawn chair, or whatever type of chair it is, an auditorium chair. You got <laughs> so many, you got a chair in the, in the Museum of African American History. It's just a chair. It's just sitting there. It's hilarious, you know. However, <laughs> at the same time, we have to understand the mentality of the white man. He not laughing. This is what we have to begin to understand and why we have to look at separation as the only solution to our problem because while we are celebrating we see this as victory and it is a victory for us because you know we were bred on fearing the white man right and obviously those uh safeguards have failed 
They failed. And now we can now look into the mind of Pharaoh where he says, come, let us deal with them wisely for they multiply, join on to another army and come against us. And we see that he's already ready to go to war. So what is in the back of his mind when he sees a scene like that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Excellent. Excellent point. Anyone else got any questions before we go on? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum right. salam. You said uh, in your opening comments that we were free, but didn't 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 Abraham Lincoln emancipate us? And if you know, that's such a big word, emancipation. Most people don't know what that word really means. Well, it comes from, I believe, the Latin emancer. Uh, and it means to free from one's hand, but not necessarily from one's control. And even though the physical chains may be removed from our ankles and our hands, they have never let go of the control of our minds through the educational system, through the banking systems, to the religious systems, all of this permeated and poisoned by an ideology called white supremacy, where everything white is right, bright, and light, and everything black, as Brother Stephen said earlier, is demonic, dark, ugly, fearful, etc. So here we are sitting here, and again, Brother Rodney, you made it very clear. Here's what Lincoln had to say for all those who have watched the movies, Abraham Lincoln, the vampire slaver, slayer, Abraham Lincoln, the freed us, and they did the big movie on it, and everybody was just, oh my, thank God for good old Abe. But here's what Abraham Lincoln said about this whole thing with black people. When Abraham Lincoln tried to resettle free black Americans, but really, this is the new language they've added to it, but at that time, resettle Negroes, niggas, and coons, and shines in the Caribbean. Lincoln wanted to end slavery, but wasn't keen on integrating Negroes, niggas, into U.S. society. His first attempt to send them offshore proved disastrous on the night of December 31st, 1862, a day before he issued, Brother Rodney, what you ask about, this final emancipation proclamation to effectively end slavery in America. President Abraham Lincoln signed a contract with Bernard Cox. And I believe this is a Jewish name like Epstein and uh, uh, Rothschild and this kind of thing, like Mayor Koch or Koch in New York. They wanted to call Mr. Farrakhan the devil. And Mr. Farrakhan to tell him that power at last forever in New York in Madison Square Garden, which was so full that you couldn't get nobody else in it in terms of, I believe, the 50,000, whatever the number was, they went over into the felt forum, all out in the street. People threw away their cameras, guns, and the trash, rather than get out of line and take it back because they wanted to hear what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan had to say. Bernard Cock, an entrepreneur and Florida cotton planter. Their agreement was to use federal funds to relocate 5,000 formerly enslaved people from the United States to what was called the Ile A Vache, which was the Cal Island, a small 20 square mile island off the southwestern coast of Haiti. Since the early 1850s, Lincoln had been advancing colonization. So again, emancipation. And when you're a colony, 
like the early Americans were, white Americans were, that came over here. They were a colony of England. <clears throat> but they got tired of being a colony because England was taking all of their resources. So they said to themselves, why should we continue to be a colony? We need to be free. So the Boston Tea Party and uh, the Night Riders or the Night Ride of What's his name? The one that carried the lamp and two of by sea and three of by day and Paul Revere and his ride. Right. So they now understood that they were colonized. They were colonized and they broke away from Britain and England. Well, then why would we want to be colonized to be under your control? See, so emancipation is just a trick word that ignorant Negroes don't even understand. You call it freedom when emancipation doesn't even mean that, but we don't look up words. So we get tricked as we got tricked into slavery by the misuse and the trickness in the use of language. While he's strongly opposed, so they say, the right. institution of slavery, he didn't believe, though, in racial equality or that people of different races could successfully integrate. Mm. But he couldn't get that through the head of the Negroes at that time. Right. And unleashing nearly four million black people into white American society, north or south, was a political non-starter. None of his other white brethren would accept some kind of just releasing black people to roam around and find their way. White folks wasn't going to tolerate it, north or south, so forget the north being the promised land. It was just another slave town or what some call the North was just up South. So despite the fact that most Black Americans in the 1850s had been born on U.S. soil, Lincoln advocated shipping them to Central America, the Caribbean, or back to Africa, if as the friends of colonization's hope we succeed in freeing our land from the dangerous presence of slavery, or in other words, the dangerous presence of the niggers. Uh. And at the same time, in restoring a captive people to their long lost fatherland, Lincoln said during his eulogy for statesmen Henry Clay, in 1852, it will indeed be a glorious consumption. Lincoln saw colonization as a practical solution to the millions of freed by the Emancipation Proclamation, wrote James Ruth Spencer. What does that sound like to you? A scholar of the Ile Vache effort. Thus, the proclamation would satisfy those who wish for emancipation of the Negro, as well as those who feared that the free slave would overrun the North. Are there any comments on what we just read, inspired by or sparked by the question Brother Rodney asked about what is emancipation? Right. Um, I think one of the things that we also look at is that, uh, you know, 1877. So we do know that in the history, and I'll read just a little bit of um, of that history of, the, of, repar of reparations. It says the 40 acres and the mule concept originated during the Reconstruction era when Union uh, General William T. Sherman issued special field order 
number 15 in 1865. This order intended to uh, redistribute confiscated land to newly emancipated black families, providing them with an opportunity for economic self-sufficiency. However, and there's always a however under the, uh, under the architecture of white supremacy. However, this promise was short-lived as it was overturned by President Andrew Johnson, resulting in most of the land being returned to white slave owners. So we know that that was, um, that, that was a great betrayal uh, by the government of the United States. And right. really the government of the United States, we could just say is the uh, government of the white man because he not only uh, has a forked tongue with the black man, but he's had over a number of years a forked tongue with the Native American right. promising them and then reneging on that promise and doing worse than what was even before the promise. Right, right, right. Excellent, excellent comments. Anyone I else have, have any uh, comments brother, be before we yes, move sir. on? We'll bring yes, in sir, brother, brother Marcel. Marcel. Yes, sir. Salam alaikum, brother student. Well, alaikum salam. Yes, sir. Brothers mentioned land. Mentioned the land. Mm -hmm. Now I want to read from the Bible in the book of Genesis. Of course, we under we've heard this verse a thousand times. And God said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards they shall come out with great substance. Now in the groundbreaking book, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us message to the black man. Page 229, a chapter called A Nation of Our Own. Brother Minister, I want you to highlight the importance of land, even in the reparations conversation. The messenger said, we must now seek the friendship of other nations to do business with them and trade for product and that no nation respects a beggar. There is not any earth offered to us in integration. And do we not look ignorant begging white America to accept us? as equal members of their society without having one square foot of earth that we can call our own. Now we, you know, part of reparations, I know they have always steered the conversation towards economics, you know, put money in the hands of the descendants of slaves, but they never seem to come up and even entertain or address the thought that a part of the reparations that we need is a land of our own where we can do for ourselves where they don't even right. have to worry about us you know and if they if israel if the jews took that verse and absorbed it for themselves and they went and found them a land and america helped fund that land and now we have a country called israel on the planet if america helped rebuild germany and eastern europe within the marshall plan as well as help rebuild Japan after World War II, after dropping those two atomic bombs on them till now, Japan and Germany are economic superpowers, but they're on their own land. Israel's an economic superpower and a military superpower, but she's on her own land. Right. The main, one of the main elements I want you to uh, highlight for us, brother student minister, is why is it so important that one, we receive land in, our repar in our quest for reparations and why is it so important that they do everything within their power to keep land from us mm. number one let's answer the first part or the last part first uh they keep land from us because people with knowledge know there is nothing on top of the earth that was not mined up out of the earth. Hmm. You can give us some paper money, but the paper money has to be backed up by something like a gold or silver. And the paper money itself came from the trees 
that grow on the land that you chop up the wood to make paper out of. Hmm. The clothes on our backs come from the animals, the cattle, the sheep that live on top of the land that we have to feed from the earth to keep these animals alive so that they can serve and obey the command that God gave to Adam, have power and dominion over the fowl of the earth, the fish of the sea, and every creeping things that crawl. Adam was made a Khalifa. He was made a ruler over the garden, which is the earth. So they want to keep land from us and talk about economics all the time or some money from them that ain't worth the paper it's printed on. But they don't want to talk about the land that the very life germ of us that put the human population on the earth came from. And that's why they don't want to talk about land, brother Marcel. And the reason why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in the point that we just made to start this program, you don't hear anywhere in his comments here. In point number four, hmm. he doesn't say, we want our people whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a bank account. We want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a checking account. We want our people in America, grandparents, to get some money. We want our people to get $5 million. He don't mention nothing about no money. He says to establish a separate state or territory of their own because he knows that if you get the land, Brother Marcel, as you so beautifully asked, if we could get the land, everything else we need comes from the land. But if you don't even own right. a square foot, as he said, come on, how can you be expected to prosper, grow, when all you want to do, as we said earlier today, is integrate into the bathroom, integrate our fumes in with their fumes, integrate at their white water fountain, don't own the fountain, don't own the hotel, just want to be by you, massa. And that's why we're not free to this day, because that's the kind of ignorant, Negro destroyed leadership that white America has put in front of us. But brother Marcel, you are so accurate. There's nothing that can be done until we get some land that we can call our own and the economy and the money will take care of itself because everything comes from the earth. All right, beautiful. Um, and Brother Marcel, if you like me to bring you on, if you have something further to add, just let me know and I'll definitely do that. Um, Brother, Brother Rodney, did you have anything else that you would like to add? Oh no, uh, brother, brother Timothy, he he sent the comment. I I would like to ask that he would like to know who has the uh, authority over the guidelines of reparation. Who has the authority over the guidelines of reparation? That's really in the hands of Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the government of the United States of America, which is the last, uh, the greatest nation in the past 6,000 years. It's within her power to fulfill the requests of the guidelines that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put forth. And even if she says she is broke mm. because she's in so much debt that she could never repay us okay let's go with that then we say to you that america is for sale china right now really owns america 
She owns many of the banks in America. America is in debt to China. And if China was to ever call in her debt, America would be broken. And that's why she puts all of her money and goes further and further into debt because she puts it all in the military because she understands that debt is slavery and white America's pride will never allow her to ever bow to being enslaved. So if China tried to call in her debt, America would go to war with China before she would allow China to bankrupt her in terms of calling in a justifiable debt. So if you don't want to give us the reparations as asked, then get the hell out of our way. When the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was getting fished in by the thousands and millions of tons setting us up to be independent with Peru and other nations of the earth. It was you that did not want to pay the reparations. It was you, white America, that destroyed the 60 to 70 black towns. And you say to us all the time, pull yourself up, black man. Stop being lazy, black man. Then when we go to do something for self, who is there to stop us? Who is there to destroy our towns, kill our babies? It is you, white America. So if you can't afford to give us the money, then get the hell out of the way. Right. And we'll make a way for ourselves as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did. And now repeating that growth and work is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But you fight him at every turn. And that's what has brought down on you the total wrath, judgment of Allah, which cannot be overturned or revoked. It's too late for you, America. Your doom is sealed. That's right. And all the Negroes that want to go with you. Babylon has indeed fallen. Yes, sir, Brother Minister. And you you bring up so many good points and one of the points that i think that we should all you know we talk about karma and we talk about what comes around goes around well if we look at the chastisement that is coming down on america then i think that we can understand why america is in the condition that she is in today yes you know because because the white man has never repent he's never repented of what right. he has done to the black man by robbing him of a knowledge of self, not only robbing him on the, of a knowledge of self, but can you imagine three, three centuries where you work a human being from can't see day to can't see night, where you go into another human being's home and, and, and rape his woman nightly, you know, where you use his babies as alligator bait. Right. Where you castrate the man in the tree so much so that the that uh, that the people make a song called Strange Fruit. Right. Where where you just I mean, he's done so much to us. And that's just talking about slavery. That's right. not even talking about after slavery, where then he designed a system called sharecropping. He right. designed a ship, another system called the chain gang where right. some of our young people would go out and they would never come home and they were arrested and put in these chain gangs just because, you know, and work to death. Right. So when we see the white man today and, you know, the, 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 the fear that is coming over him it right. is because he knows, <laughs> he knows, and but he will not, he will not do the right thing. And that's why, you know, He's in the condition that he's in. Yes, sir. Excellent points, my brother. Excellent points. Uh, uh, here goes the uh, points that um, Lincoln met with black leaders mm. as uh, the various presidents over the years have met with black leadership. 
but black leadership, because it's really Negro leadership, has not ever asked for anything beyond right. being with and nearness to Pharaoh or nearness to white America, the current rulers of the earth. These black leaders did not want to leave America in spite of it. And that same kind of thing is going on today as you're showing in this Muhammad Speaks of December 16th of 1966. The wow. U.S. government calls in the black preacher, gives them that what is called the Negro Bible, missing all of the important passages and verses only quoting those verses in this particular Bible that say things like uh, slave, obey your master, slave, pray for those that despitefully use you, slave, if he slap you on one cheek, turn the other, slave, if he take your coat, give him your pants also, and that's it. And that's how we still think to this very day, because even though we may be in the black church, we're still preaching a doctrine that supported a white image of Jesus, which was false. So if the image was false and the doctrine supporting it was false, why are we still preaching it today? But said we put a black face on it, but we don't change the interpretation other than the one he gave us for the previous false image. Right. So Lincoln met with them and the colonization movement was never popular with most Negroes and abolitionists, shame upon the guilty wretches that dare propose. This was Frederick Douglass talking, but still he was not talking about leaving America. Right. He felt that he, he had a right to be here and he was right in a sense, but that was not because he had understanding that did not come until God came. And yes, we're gonna stay in America now, because we paid for it, we sweated for it, we died for it, hell, we built it. So we'll stay here now, but not then. We right. needed to get the hell up out of it because that was the desire of those slaves that came on to Jamestown and were dumped off. They weren't crying about Jesus, the white Jesus that was on the ship called the Jesus of Lubeck. So they dropped the Lubeck and made our forefathers think after they ripped them of their minds that they were crying out for Jesus, not the Jesus of the prophet, but Jesus of Lubeck, that ship that they were on. They wanted to get back on that ship and go home. Right. But after you take the children now, brainwash them, whitewash them, make them say, I'm no longer Toby, but Kente Kente, or Kute Kente, but I'm Toby, I'm Chicken George, I'm Fiddler. Now we want to stay because we've been bred into accepting that the only way we can survive and live is by living under them no matter how badly we are treated. And so since we're uh, getting close to the bottom of the hour, and I would love to just continue this conversation to, until we exhaust it. One of the things that I wanted to talk about now is us being forced to separate. You know, sure. we, as a people, we are just like the children of Israel. We don't necessarily like Pharaoh, but, but we sure do like that nice chariot that he's driving. Exactly. We sure do like that nice home that he's living in. Sure. <laughs> So we won't we won't separate from him because we're enamored by Pharaoh's wealth and his riches and his fame and you know all the things that he says that he can give to you and some right. of us sell ourselves out so that we can possess some of his tokens of of of, of wealth some of his crumbs of wealth. So if you can now go I guess a little bit into where we are right now. I mean, we sure. as you opened you. up, we just see we just seen what took place in Hawaii. We're seeing what has taken place over the summer with the heat that is so extreme that it literally was killing people. 
And now we got winter coming and winter is even worse than summer because when the power goes out, like it did in Texas, many of our people, we, we some of us, we, we barely even have a coat uh, to put on our body. You're correct, sir. Uh, before I answer that and go further into it, but I see Brother Marcel is back online. Go ahead and ask your question or comment, Brother Marcel, and then I'll come back, Brother Stephen, and talk about uh, our enamorance with our enamorance with uh, Pharaoh, our enamorance with white people, and why some of us cannot let go because we are really hypnotized by the baubles and the sleight of hand and you know, some of us right. love to watch magic shows and the white man is good with manipulating things around and we so fascinated that we can't take our eye off of to see the truth about him because we're caught up in the trick. Brother Marcel. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Minister. In the Holy Quran, when Allah gave Iblis respite for his refusal to make obeisance, to the black man that he fashioned and shaped and put his spirit and mind in. Could it be said that black people in America are under a time of respite from God because we refuse to make obeisance to the instructions and the guidance that he has put in his messenger concerning separation into a land of our own? Could it be said that Allah has given us respite so that we can exhaust all of our wisdom and all of our knowledge and our black leadership? Go ahead, try your hand. Do everything you possibly can think of to try to get this enemy to give you justice. And then, like the messenger says, after everything else has failed, why not try Islam? Are we arriving at that point? Is a lot. Do you could could it be said that he's given us respite so that we can just get this last little bit of rebellion out of us to his guidance and instruction, sir? Brother Marcel, that was a, such an excellent question. Most certainly, it could be said that because if you remember also in the scriptures that you all quoted earlier about the Noah of Shorty Abraham there was a time when they finally did accept Moses' offer and they came out of the, out of Pharaoh, out of Egypt land and they went out into the wilderness. But if you remember correctly, what should have been a 40 day journey mm -hmm. turned into a 40 year journey and the elders the Negro leaders, the rebellious ones, the ones that want to hold on to white America, which goes right into Stephen's point about why is it today that we still want to hold on because we're enamored by his car, his house. That is because, Brother Marcel, as you said, that respite is that so that the elder ones, the one that respects absolutely refuse dig their feet in because they want to remain near to him mm. that's why their young of their own children are turning on them and many of them are dying out because you're right brother marcel they are respited and then the god went on to say when iblis said well i'll take uh, I'll make all of them deviate. Well, go ahead. And I will feel what? Hell, Hell with you all. So yes, there are many of us that are not going to make it, even though that's not for us to decide. Our job, of course, is to continue to reach out, continue to go after. But Allah has already decided who among us ain't going to make it. So our job is that we must fight, though, to stay in obeisance to him. And then that almost increases our odds and guarantees us a trip into paradise. But Brother Marcus, I mean, Brother Marcel, Brother Stephen, again, we have to remember that this thing 
is not a hundred yard dash. It's not even a 200 meter dash. If this is not even really a marathon, we're talking about a multiple generational uh, transition of our people and our children who can, when they finally become born out of that generation, their mind will be like the mind of the teenagers on the mothership flying the baby plane. They will only think of Allah and the God power in them is all that will exist in them. And that's why it is written, there will come a time when the things of this world won't even be a memory to be discussed. And so we have to live so long as to make sure that we are the foundational stones, the carpet, the road that our children and generations yet unborn can travel on. As we see in the ants, as we are told, they will build their own bodies mm. and drown so that the youth and the hive or the, the mound can survive. But we only think about ourselves. Well, hell, if I can't get to here after blah, 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 well, then why should I do anything? Well, that's what your Negro parents thought about you. That's why you were where you at today. Because our people before us had that same kind of Negro mindset. So when in the hell are we going to break the cycle? Yes, I want to make it to the hell after. Yes, I want all of the promise of God. But whether I live to see it or not, damn it, I'm not going to let another generation go by while my ass sit around thinking about, oh, my God, maybe I might not see it. That's a right. nigga thinking. And we got to kill it. And the only person that can kill it in your mind is you. So, yes, brother, we got we got a respite because we acting just like Iblis. That Iblis mentality is still in many of us. So, yes, sir. Let me, uh, I wanted to ask the question, why, you know, why, why are we going through what we're going through? Why were we brought into bondage and, and suffer for 400 years with our names and language and religion taken from us? Is there a reason why? Yes. There is a passage in the scripture in a parable in a conversation with Jesus and some of his disciples and bystanders standing by, there was a blind man sitting on the stoop, sitting at a house, sitting in the street. And they asked Jesus, is it because his mother sinned? Mm. Because his father sinned? And Jesus said, neither did his father sin, nor did his mother sin, but he was born blind so that the glory or the works of God might be made manifest in him. Brother Marcel was speaking earlier today, and he talked about the fact that God had hid himself and Man, of course, as we know, as we're taught him to the black man, begin to worship his own ideas of God. And because of that rebellious nature in the tribe of Shabazz, we were put to sleep, brought into the slave trade, and made blind, deaf, and dumb. Not because we did anything, not because we were guilty of any sin. We were made blind, deaf, and dumb. So that when God promised in his scriptures and prophecies that he would come like the son of man, lightning out of the east to the west, he would come and prepare a body and flesh to come down to see 
what all was going on, that he would create a problem as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has shared with us that only he could solve. We were made this way so that when God turned us around, turned the Negro around, when all of the scholars, all of the scientists said, it is impossible. They are incorrigible. They are irredeemable. They are irreconcilable. It would be easier to go to the physical cemetery and dig that body back up again and bring it back to life than to bring the black man and woman back to themselves. So if it is in fact being accomplished and we are rising up, then that is proof that no one else could do it. No one else even wanted to try. So once we are up, once we are moving throughout the world and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad now ring throughout the earth, then you know that God has in fact arrived, that God is present, so that the glory of God may be made manifest in a people who were born blind, made blind, deaf, and deaf by our open enemies, Satan. Beautiful. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. So it looks as though I could say we're at the, the bottom of the hour. And sure. Um, sure. I would love to you know, carry this on and do maybe like a part two, three and four. We can do that. Yeah, we can do all of that. We, 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 we didn't even get into, you know, John Conyers and how oh. he has put reparations right, before right, the government. Right. All, of the book, <laughs> all of the books that were written. In fact, the minister traveled to the Hague or the, the summit with them. And the, these brothers actually literally had the documents that mm. were sound, so sound, that they would have won that they they would have won the, the the argument hands down but because white folks mm. critiqued the book now you tell you sell it to us uncompromisingly with some strength then when you mm. get to where it matters you were willing to go back and rewrite the book based on what the slave master you're demanding your rights from says so now what you are saying is it has no teeth in it. Mm -hmm. So you're right back where you started from a beggar, begging the man that you presented a just case to, but because he don't like it, you a big nigga in front of us when you present it and the documentation you had in your hand was proof that it was right, but you don't have the balls, the testicular fortitude to fight the man for that without compromise. And that's why we need to get behind the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, men who don't bow, men who don't scratch, men who are not afraid to argue what is justice for us. That's right. So as we close out, can, can I have just one last question uh, for us to close out. Maybe we can do a, like I said, part two or part three. Sure, sure, sure. My question is, is our plea for reparations, is this, or yeah, I'll say it, is this something that is divine or is this something that is, that is carnal? If you understand what I'm saying. Sure, I know, understand exactly what you're saying. The, uh, what we don't understand is the, and I think we said this earlier today, for everything on the physical plane or the carnal or the secular, there is a mental and spiritual counterpart. We're going to lay the intellectual aside for a moment and talk about the relationship between the spiritual, the carnal, or the spiritual not spooky, not ghost, but energy and the power of thought and the vibrations that are in the electrical energy that actually produces thought. Thought is actually electrical magnetic 
energy and thoughts actually alter and affect matter. Mm. Come on, Brian. So you take a sounding rod and you hit it on the end of a table like we used to do in science class. You take that sounding rod, stick it into a glass of water, and you see the water vibrate and waves go out. Mm. Well, what about if thought is real and the God called Master Far Muhammad put a thought out there called a determined idea? Mm. Yakub had what? a determined idea at the age of six that he was going to make a man. Did he make the man? Most certainly because his idea, the thought was so powerful that the, the gods had to say, let it be. It wasn't a part of their active will necessarily, but they said what? That thought was so determined, so powerful, they said, let it be. Master Farad Muhammad had a thought, an idea at the age of six where he saw himself pushing the DuPonts, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the J.P. Morgans and whatnot into a lake of fire. Is that happening? Yes, is America coming down? Is Europe coming down? Is Germany coming down? Are the nations of the earth coming down from a predetermined idea so powerful originating in the thought in the head of the original man, the God himself? And yes, brother, this thought is so powerful that it actually changes things, thoughts are actually what the spiritual really is. You change up the thinking, that is the spiritual. That is the energy that changes things. If you cannot change people's thinking, and that's why in the book of the Brown Americans, in message to the black man, the messenger said, they said, we have cut off every avenue by which light, light is energy, light is Hear it. So yes, brother, the spiritual affects the carnal. It raises you above the carnal because the carnal wears out. Our bodies wear out. But once we are dead, that energy, that unseen reality goes back to the God from whence it came, the originator that came out of the darkness, not through some spooky means, but the energy contained in the atom, in the substantive darkness of space that spun and evolved and produced all that we see out of something called nothing, meaning it was something, but it was doing absolutely nothing until that first atom of life, light and power sparkled in it and produce now all that we see. It is that energy, that thinking, that yes, brother, is superior to the carnal, and that's why you see a change going on in the world, because the mind of Master Farah Muhammad is so powerful that the scientists could not see beyond his light. This is not some spooky thing, just some bright lights in your face. His thinking, that energy is, is so bright in terms of what it can do and has done. When you drop a nuclear bomb, you can't see it. If you do see it, you'll go blind. But the devastation of what that atomic bomb did to Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the effects of it are still there. So think about a God that got that kind of power in his brain. Yeah, the carnal things will pass away, brother. This man has it down in his head. But anyway, yes, sir, to answer your question. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was stuck mesmerized. Uh, like I always say, you know, I'm catching the ghost over here because, you know, 
that is in truth, you know, when we talk about, you know, all joking aside, when we talk about catching that Holy Ghost, we are talking about feeling that spirit of truth. Right, right. Not right. necessarily some type of, you know, running up and down aisles or anything right. like that. But when you feel that type of truth, that type of energy that is coming through this mechanical device, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Well, even even like you said, if you touch a light bulb or static electricity on a carpet, it gives you a little shock. So we may, right. because of the, our training and discipline, we could shout in the mosque if we wanted to. There have mm -hmm. been times when I've heard some lectures where I wanted to jump up, but I just know that that's not something that we practice or want to encourage in our people, that we silly like that. But it's not because you don't necessarily feel that when you hear the minister say certain things or even your brother say certain things. that it don't strike you, man. That's energy, man. Yeah. Bear that's witness. Energy. We affect each other. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, Brother Minister Will. Um, we definitely have to continue this conversation Without right now. Without a question. Thank you, sir. Uh, we, we want to uh, encourage everyone to uh, that is listening in to continue to listen in uh, and to join into the conversation every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is a good uh, vehicle for us to be able to use uh, to communicate. If we have any questions, that we don't understand, we can don't feel free to ask those type of questions. And if we can't answer them, of course, student minister Donnell will, he has access to the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, but let us not wait because we don't have a lot of time. The That's rain right. is falling right now and it yes. will only increase. The waters are beginning to rise and we can feel the waters rise because we literally feel the weight of this world, we real, literally feel it collapsing. So tune in every Sunday, uh, have your have questions ready. And uh, with that, I will close out and may God continue to bless you and your family with the light of truth and understanding as we leave you, as we came before you in the greeting words of peace of As-Salamu Alaikum. And well, I, don't alaykum think I have an exit, so we're just going to go ahead and exit on out Yes, sir. As-salamu alaykum, family. Wa-salam.